Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nao and I teach creative people how to sell their art online and today is the fifth day of Christmas week and for those of you who have been asking me, mostly on DMs, why am I starting Christmas week in August? No, it's not one of those Christmas and July sales, but if you want to sell stuff on Christmas, if you want to have special deals for Christmas, Christmas products for people, they will need to buy them and get them before Christmas, which means that if we're talking about most print on demands and if we're talking about worldwide shipping, we're talking about a month or two for production and shipping, which means that people start ordering Christmas products on October and even on September. By the way, there is one person on our Facebook community who just posted they sold their first Christmas sticker on Redbubble few days ago. So you see, people are starting to order Christmas products as of now because they know it's going to take them time to arrive and there is no time like the present to make sure that you're all set up for Christmas. And today, on the fifth day of Christmas week, we are all about Christmas wrapping paper. So it's also like print and demand wrapping paper and also specifically for Christmas. I'm going to take in my computer and show you two different types of wrapping paper that you could be selling on print on demand. The first wrapping paper I'm going to show you with Print on Demand is with the Print on Demand supplier Printify that you can integrate with your Etsy shops, Shopify stores, WooCommerce, and whatever it is that you are selling that integrates with, well, I think it's like the second biggest Print on Demand company in the world. So I'm going to take you there and I'm going to show you how I make a seamless pattern using Canva to be placed on a Printify wrapping paper. And the elements that I'm using for commercial use approved for print and demand are from Creative Fabrica. They were downloaded in a previous video and there is a link down below to Creative Fabrica where you can go in and get a 30% lifetime discount on their all access pass for print and demand suppliers and marketers. After that, I'm going to take you to Society6. And Society6 is just like Redbubble, only not like Redbubble. The process of uploading things is far slower. You don't have the option to repeat anything, you actually have to create a really, really large file for their wrapping paper and for a lot of their products, which is not available on Canva. So I'm going to be taking you to Clip Studio Paint, which is my favorite software when I want to do big projects. I think it's like around 8,000 or 6,000 pixels, the design specs that you will need for their wrapping paper. We're going to also download a few elements from Creative Fabrica, Snowflakes, and with the help of my trusted Wacom tablet, we're going to design something pretty, pretty cool. I'm going to show you a little bit about this platform a bit more, and then we're going to upload it onto Society6 and check out their wrapping paper. But there is also something else that I'm going to do because at the last minute, I decided to take the design I did for Printify for wrapping paper and upload it onto Redbubble because it is a seamless pattern. So we're going to go to my computer. I'm going to show you everything I've done today with Christmas wrapping papers for print on demand suppliers and marketers. And we're going to get back to me and talk a little bit more about what we have in store for us in the last two days of Christmas week, the last days of the month of August, as well as why did I put this on Redbubble as well. Let's just start and have a good time. Starting from Printify, we have wrapping paper as a print and demand product that you can integrate with your Etsy stores, your Shopify stores, or sell manually, like order the orders manually while selling them on your Payhip stores, for example. And as you can see here, Printify always have two different products. So if you're selling this on the normal Printify account, which is free, then the wrapping paper base cost is going to be $6.72 and whatever you price on top of it will be your margins. And if you're selling it with Printify Premium, it's gonna be 517 as a base cost. And I'm going into this design and we have some nice mock-ups here. I particularly like this one. And we have all the specs of these available in two sizes, print on one side only, a blank or white space with a barcode at the top edge. And what we need to do right now is just start designing. And when we start designing with Printify, we know that the recommended size for this design would be 3600 by 5400 pixels, which is actually a size available for us on Canva. So I open this design and I'm trying to think what I want to put on it. And we're talking about Christmas wrapping. Yeah. So let's go to my uploads and see some of the things that we downloaded in the previous video when we're talking about stickers. And we have all these beautiful gnomes here. And I'm thinking I want to use these gnomes to create my wrapping paper. And even though that this specific wrapping paper does not require a seamless pattern per se, I do know that I want to create a seamless pattern because I might want to use this for Redbubble later on. I might want to put it on other products. I might want to have this 
option and this possibility to make it into a bigger product. So if you guys don't remember how to make a seamless pattern, it was pretty, pretty simple. All I have to do is take one of these elements, center them until I see the center line, the big purple line on Canva, copy paste them, center them on the exact same side as well as with each other. So when I choose both of them clicking the shift button, I can move both of them together and they will keep their own dimensions. So I can change them and align them as much as I want. And then I'm gonna take this one and do the same on the top. Find out the center line and make sure the designs are matching top to bottom with each other. Let's see like that. Yes, we have a match. I also prefer opening another page. It makes things easier to move around. But you know what? Let me just finish this part of the design with a seamless pattern while you guys listen to some awesome music. And I'm done and I'm looking at this now and I see a lot of white which means that I'm gonna have a different background I'm gonna really need a different background with this one and if I choose a nice background like this it's just not going to be a seamless pattern and I'm really into a seamless pattern at the moment so I can choose a solid color like this one or let's try to play around with it maybe give it something a bit red or something very pale green because that's gonna look cool and I'm just gonna download this one just the first page, no need for the second. Go to Printify, add my design from my computer, from the Downloads folder. And this would be my wrapping paper. I can save this product as well as have a look at some of the mockups that were generated from this platform automatically. So we have this mockup as well as this one, which is kind of cool. I'm kind of digging it. Once you are connected to a store of any kind, to an Etsy store or to a Shopify, you can push this product to your store. But there is another place where you can sell these print on demand wrapping papers for Christmas, and that is Society6. And Society6 has so many wrapping papers, amazing and unique. The thing is, they don't have a really big variety. Like when I was looking for Christmas wrapping paper, it was really hard to find. And one of the reasons why it's harder to find a lot of products on Society6, not just their extremely long process of uploading, is the fact that they require an extremely large file size that you cannot do on Canva. So if I'm trying to go into one of my already activated products, I can just scroll downstairs, down below to find my wrapping paper, and I can see that I need at least 6,075 pixels by 8,775 pixels, which is not something you can do on Canva, but it is something that I can do on Clip Studio Paint. So I'm just gonna go to Clip Studio Paint after, of course, I'm gonna find it first. <laughs> and yes, I know that a lot of you have been waiting for a tutorial on Clip Studio Paint, and one is coming. And what I'm gonna do with Studio Paint is I'm gonna create a new file. And as I can see, I need my file to be in custom dimensions and in pixels and what I need the width to be, 75 on 87.75. Let's start with this one. 
And when I'm looking at this blank piece of paper, I also want to combine some graphics that I don't want to make myself. So I'm going to go back to Creative Fabrica, and I'm looking at some awesome Christmas designs that I think about combining. But what I want to do now is just take a bit of snow, you know? I just want something snowy. I want it to be approved for print and in. I want it to be illustration and graphics. I'm trying to think maybe I want it to be something like watercolor or something like that. I want something really, really special with my snowflakes. Let's just do snowflakes to remove the snowman from the equation. And I like these ones and these ones as well. But let's just go into one of these. I think they're a bit rough for what I want to do. And I think that these might do better. We have several snowflakes here, but it's not on the print on demand approved license, which is really weird because I'm seeing it under the print on demand category, which is why you should always double check before you download anything online to make sure that you have the right to use them. We have watercolor, colorful snowflakes for commercial and print on demand approved. Let's download it, open it up. While it's being downloaded, I have to say this is a beautiful t-shirt. I'm definitely gonna wanna put it on some Redbubble products after that. Now that it's been downloaded and unzipped, let's go to my PNG folder where I see a lot of these. There are a lot of frames here with these elements. I just want the elements themselves. I don't want any of the makings that they've done with them. So I wanna take all of these four and open them up with Clip Studio Paint. And they are rather big, but what I'm going to do with each and every one of them is copy paste them to my first design just using Command C, Command V, or Ctrl C, Ctrl V if you're not using a Mac. Let's just bring about a grabber so we can see what we're doing and get our last one which is here, and it also contains this one, but I don't want this to contain this one, so I'm just gonna go with lasso and delete this part of the object. And I am using my Wacom tablet at the moment. It's the easiest thing to do when I'm using Clip Studio Paint. And I can just move each and every one of these pieces as I go along, trying to figure out what I wanna do with this design. and. I think that some of what I want to do here, I might require these elements on various and different sizes. So what I'm going to do is looking at these elements, for example, this one, copy paste this layer. And then I'm going to copy paste the second layer, the third, and just try to move them around and copy paste them as I go along to create multiple versions of them. And some of these versions, I'm going to scale down. Let's have a look at this one. Let's scale this down. And I'm holding the shift key while scaling to make sure that it does not change any of the dimensions. I can also turn them around. Let's have a look at this one and this one. And this is what I'm working with. I'm thinking I might want more of them. So let's just click on the one I want and copy paste them up and then scale some of them down again a bit more. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to align them in a way that feels natural to me, that feels comfortable to me, that looks good. I'm not going to bother with a seamless pattern with this one. It's a bit harder for me. I know you guys think that <laughs> I make the sunshine. But to me, creating seamless patterns in Clip Studio Paint is still a bit rough. But I'm just going to create something that looks nice. I'm pretty sure that whatever I do with this design, it's going to look super cute. I'm not, I, I don't think there is a possibility of this design not looking cute with all of these beautiful elements that we have available for us in here. Even if I just end up placing it on a white background, as long as it's a bit pleasing to the eye, it's gonna be fine. Let's just make it smaller so I can get a bit of perspective on what I'm doing and grab another one of those. And I am thinking also to grab this one again and place this one here. And this is my design. 
I can save this design as is. I can use it with a white background or without a background at all, or add a new layer. And with this new layer, then I'm going to try to push all the way up to the top, remove this layer, remove the paper, and take all of the scene layers that I have and merge them together so there'll be just one layer of everything. And with the new layer, I'm just going to have fun. I want to think about a color that might look nice as a background to some of these. Let's try and see how it goes. And it doesn't look good. Maybe something dark. Oh, this looks weird, guys. So, so weird. Maybe not so dark. And I'm thinking maybe I'll do spray painting on it. Like tone scraping in white. Maybe that would be a nice touch. Let's see what we're doing. We are a bit too high, too far away because this is a huge design. And the tone scraping is just minimal, minimum pieces. We also have the droplet that we've used in some of the tutorials, even though it doesn't really look that good. We also have shadows which we can't really see that much. We have the highlights. It's just highlight stuff. And I might want to use this one, but I might want to just, you know, do a bunch of lines or... I'm really not feeling it, guys. It's kind of really hard to design on command. I did like the droplet, even though I thought it was too much. Let's see if I have any interesting effects here I can put behind like flowers or certain patterns to be in the back. I actually have snow patterns like this one that I could have just made the entire design from these snow patterns. And it all depends on what you have inside your own platform, inside your own design software. We have some lines that might look nice, like wavy lines, but they are really small. Ooh, this might look nice. I kind of like this one. I think I'm liking this one. Just some lines around, but maybe let's try to make them a bit more on purpose. Um, choosing a bit of a smaller size. And then just going all over this place. I can also change the color of the background based on what I've just done because I basically just cut out this into pieces. So what I can do is something like this which is also a nice wrapping paper, by the way, and add this on it, even though it might seem a bit rough to add this on it. The colors might be too vivid, so I'm playing with the opacity. And again, guys, I'm not sure I'm liking it, so I think that the best thing for me to do is just go with a simple color one or color the rest of these in black. I color everything in black and then put it on. Maybe I can color the lines, not in black, but in something a bit darker. And see now, the lines are just not working for me. I'm going to try another layer, see maybe this time I get it right. Thinking, you know what, I'm just going to go with really dark royal blue. And I'm just going to spray all over it in white. This is sort of like my go-to move. And let's just adjust the particle size here. Too big. And just spray paint all over it. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go back to my black. Color the background in black. And now use spray paint with smaller pieces. Just all over the place. And I kind of dig this wrapping paper, so I'm going to save it. Snow on black. And if you're using Clip Studio Paint, it's always important, or any other software, to remember to save it as JPEG or PNG because if you're going to save it as Clip Studio Paint, it's just not going to do anything. 
And what I'm going to do with my saved file, I'm going to go back to my Chrome. I'm going to go back to Society6, click on Sale, add new work, and upload this enormous file and call it Snowflakes on Black Sky. And continue. We haven't had a Society6 video in a long time. Please let me know if that is something that is interesting to you guys. And what we have here is a graphic design. Let's just do some of the tags. And we can publish this work as it is now, but going into these products and editing them because once we started with this, even though we're only interested in doing the wrapping paper, I also want to go into these some of these products because once I go in, they recalibrate themselves from a square shape to a different kind of shape like landscape or portrait. And as you can see, it's changing itself a bit. Let's save and enable for all of the other vertically aligned designs as well. And yes, it's taking forever. I know. And it's, yeah, it's taking forever. What can we do? Wall hanging, wooden wall art is one of my favorite Society6 products. Let's just enable them on what we can. The rug also looks kind of adorable. The wallpaper might look a bit weird because it's not a seamless pattern, so I'm going to deactivate it. I'm going to activate it on all of these furniture, which are kind of cool. The thing is that the furnitures on Society6 are so expensive. It's insane. Let's just activate them on bath mats, on all of those. Wine chiller, water bottle, coffee mug, travel mug, cutting board, coasters. And of course, our wrapping paper, notebook, stationary card as a sticker, Apple Watch. We have all of these cases. And really, guys, their system is so slow, it's exhausting. And I'm not going to activate them on t shirts because it doesn't look good. I'm going to leave them off, carry all pouch. And once I'm activated, basically because you've already saved the changes and published, you can just go in and have a look at how it looks. Let's just go to my shop, which has been so neglected lately, it's insane. It's going to take a while for this to be calibrated and to be visible here. Let's go to our office supplies and wrapping paper. And these are some of my existing paper is not made for Christmas. This is from the Mandela tutorial. And as you can see, this price is for a pack of five. And that's quite important. Otherwise, it would have been extremely expensive. So it's five individual sheets. Each of them are in this size. And they look kind of cool. And I'm guessing that there are other places where you can get your print and demand wrapping paper like Prodigy. And there is that thing that we just designed earlier that I'm really looking into maybe seeing how it looks on Redbubble. So you know what? Let's just go to Redbubble, quickly upload this just for kicks. And we're done. And it looks kind of cool. And there is a reason why I did this within this tutorial. Why I started with the wrapping paper and took a design that I did for Printify and uploaded onto Redbubble. And we're going to be talking about that when we get back to me, as well as what we have in store for us in the next few days of Christmas week, as well as the rest of the month of August. And we're back to me. What did you guys think? I mean, I got so messed up in my own head back there. I really did. Sometimes you just can't design. <laughs> it's not something you can just pull off. And I do hope that the more I'm starting to show you guys the real aspect behind design, the more it's going to make you feel good about yourselves for the days that you just can't hack it, you know? 
By the way, if somehow you did like these designs or this video, please hit that like button down below because every time you do, YouTube thinks, hey, this is a cool video. I'm going to show it to more people and subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. Now, the reason why I started uploading these products onto Redbubble is because it sort of relates to a topic of a video that I want to do. So I posted on this channel as well as on our community on Facebook a question, sort of a poll between two separate video ideas that I have for the rest of the month, like for the end of it. And the first being, do you want me to make a video on how I take a basic abstract painting? And I do mean an actual painting. Having just received these, <laughs> I'm in love with them, in love with them. So I do mean a physical abstract painting where I'm just gonna paint something abstract on a piece of canvas. I'm gonna show you the whole process and then I'm gonna show you how to make it into a seamless pattern. Or I was thinking about making a video about my deepest, most uh, truthful thoughts about Redbubble, about Redbubble being a tool in our print and demand journey and not being the main focus. And the poll is still on, you can still vote till pretty much the 25th of the month. So you can go ahead and check it out in the community tab and in our Facebook group, which one would you like to see? Me making abstract painting and turning it into a seamless pattern or me talking about what I really think about Redbubble. But a part of what I'm thinking about Redbubble, I can tell you right now. I do think that if you're doing print on demand and if you have these free platforms that you're already on, if I were to design stickers on Guten for my Etsy store, I would just take the same clip art and the same design and upload it onto Redbubble or Society6 or Teachip or TeePublic or Teespring or whatever they're calling themselves these days, wherever it is that you're connected. And if I'm gonna make this seamless pattern, use them for wrapping paper. I am gonna also upload them onto Redbubble because they have a marketplace, they have an audience, and it's not gonna be a hassle for me to just upload it on. So I would like you to remember that no matter what it is that you're selling, if you're selling your with your own print and demand supplier as well as printables, and you're using Payhip or Shopify or LaunchCart or Etsy or whatever, if you do have the time, Take a few minutes out of your time and just upload it onto Redbubble, upload it onto Society6, upload it onto another platform because you never know where your next sale is coming from. Now, speaking of next, uh, tomorrow I'm going to be seeing you guys here with Christmas cards. Those are printable and print on demand cards for Christmas. And the day after that, on Sunday, the 22nd, with coloring pages for Christmas. And I am going to show you something pretty cool that I'm doing with Clip Studio Paint, and I hope that you like it. Coming up on the 24th is a launch cart video showing you how to use launch cart for your digital download items. And on the 25th, shop reviews with Etsy. And if you want your shops to be reviewed, that's not too late. We're having more and more shop review videos in the coming month and coming months ahead of the time. I'm thinking of actually making it like a day, like a weekly scheduled thing. Let me know if that is something that is interesting to you. Like. Tuesday shop reviews or something like that and you can find a Google form down below in the description a link to it where you can go in and anonymously submit your shops. Those could be Redbubble Society 6, uh, Shopify, Payhip, Etsy, wherever it is that you're selling print on demand or printable items. Coming up at the 27th is how to make and sell clip art which is a video that I know that a lot of you have been waiting for and on the 30th of the month is the special video that you guys get to decide on our Facebook community or the community tab of this channel. I hope that you enjoyed this little adventure of wrapping paper and I'm kind of thrilled with all of this like Christmas week. Uh, for those of you who have been following me on Instagram, then you know that the stickers video that went up yesterday was not filmed yesterday because yesterday I was in Sofia and it was quite a hassle. Um, I still can't really sit. <laughs> like I'm sitting on a very, very big pillow right now uh, after injuring my tailbone a few weeks back. And it was an exhausting journey because Sofia is two and a half hours driving from here. And I went to Sofia and came back the same day while putting pillows in the back seat of my driver's car and just flat out lying on the car. It was really funny. We had a lot of steps on the way for me to smoke a cigarette and just walk around him because I can't sit on any hard surfaces. But I made it. We went to Sofia, I got into the Portuguese embassy, got my Portuguese ID card for the very first time ever. <laughs> I'm so happy. While also applying for my Portuguese passport, which will be delivered here to Vansco. And when that gets here, I'm gonna make residency because apparently I like Bulgaria. 
and I'm gonna be staying here for quite some time and thank you so much for letting me also share like personal stuff I don't know if anybody's watching the personal stuff uh, if you want to share something personal of yourself you can always comment down below and let me know what you guys think I kind of feel like this is very one-sided which is why I really love our Facebook community because I feel like I think in the past few weeks I just saw you guys asking questions and answering yourselves because I was not available so that was so endearing to watch you guys do and that is it I'm gonna stop babbling for today I have to actually edit this video and upload it and I always feel like a time traveler when I'm saying this but this video has to come to an end thank you so much for watching and as usual I'll see you tomorrow in my next video bye mm -hmm.